Friends, on Tuesday, May the 12th, we've got Heather Harlan here. Thank you. Uh, Phoenix Health Program. We're going to talk about drug and alcohol abuse. And it, it, it's a much, much bigger problem than most of us realize. It is, Paul. And, and you know, we've, we've talked a lot about substance use disorders or what we used to call addictions. But um, it's not a respecter of uh, gender. Um, or class or income or anything, but specifically we want to focus on the fact that it doesn't respect gender. We often think about um, substance use issues in terms of men having mm -hmm. problems. But you were telling me that many times women have a bigger a bigger uh, problem with substance abuse in men with bigger, prescription yeah, drugs. Bigger, yeah, especially, and we're focusing on that. So Why? really what, what I'm here, well, we're going to go into that. What I want to be sure to, to, um, to announce today is that Phoenix Health Program is a result of a response to what we see is we're going to be opening this fall, um, either late summer 2015 or this fall, we're going to be ex extending treatment and opening our doors for women for residential treatment and detoxification services. Oh, that's we, great. We've always been residential for adult men. We had outpatient for women, but not residential. And so people have asked, which you would have, why are you treating women? Yeah. Now, when you say residential, that means they come in and they stay mm -hmm. until they are totally detoxed. Is that the term? Well, detoxification is a few days where they come out from under the active influence of the drug because people have to be well enough physically and mentally to go to groups and classes. And when people are coming out from under the drugs, there's a lot of physical symptoms with that. And with painkillers specifically, it's like having this horrendous worst case of the flu you could ever imagine that goes on and on, which is why people tend to stay on the drugs. It's not because they're getting high. It's just to keep them functional because now their body is changed. So and you're telling me that. when you're addicted to painkillers, you're okay as long as you're on those painkillers, but when you try to wean yourself off, it's as if you have a terrible case of the flu. Yeah. How that do you wean yourself off of it? Then? Well, and that's again, to, to have some other coping skills. Sometimes there's medication assisted recovery, but the, so I can't really speak to that, but that's a possibility if people want to talk to us about that. But what we do know is that women are more vulnerable. And, and some of the reasons, what we've seen, according to the Centers for Disease Control, since 1999, overdose death from painkillers for women has risen by over 400%. Overdose death for pain women, killer. yes, for women. Now, to give you a, a little picture, it's also risen for men in that same period of time, but it's closer to about 250% for men, but 400% for women. Why do you think that is Well, happening? we know a lot of reasons. Women are more likely to have chronic pain. They're more likely to be prescribed painkillers at a higher dose for a longer period of time. And so that, that creates sort of that perfect storm in addition to a more physical vulnerability to the painkillers and addiction. To, and they become addicted more quickly. So the how, how yeah. long how long does it take to become addicted to painkillers? That's a question I couldn't answer because it's it varies quite from, a lot. I've seen person. some very quickly. I'm going to tell you a story in a minute about a woman for the, a case example, uh, a little bit about that of how it happened to her. But we also see pregnant women who are taking painkillers and becoming addicted, and this puts infants at great risk. Uh, there's a whole host of problems um, that a baby might be born with that's been exposed to painkillers while they're in utero. And uh, those levels of problems have increased by 300% from 2000 to 2009. Which, yeah, I mean, we've yeah. all heard stories of people whose babies have been born yeah. addicted mm -hmm. to heroin. So, you know, we're talking about numbers, and I want to talk about a person. Okay. Uh, Rita was a woman who called my office last week. Um, in tears, she'd had surgery about a year ago, had prescription painkillers, and 
had, had become, had developed a dependence. She was prescribed at a high dose. The doctor thought everything was fine, but she was so embarrassed. She, she needed the painkillers to be able to continue to work, to take care of her family. And the doctors were still giving her the prescription? Well, they thought she'd weaned off, but then she began behaviors she never thought she would do. She began doctor shopping and securing it from other, other people. And she was just in tears. She just wanted to be able to feel well enough to take care of her family and go to work. And there, there are a lot of employers out there that are, that are viewing this today who are, are wondering about, you know, do I have any employees that might need help? And I'm telling you, you probably do, um, but you just not, might not be aware of it, of, or you are, but you don't know how to help. So one of the things that we wanted for people to be aware of is to, to help Phoenix health programs. We're a behavioral health center focusing on families that, uh, and individuals seeking long-term recovery from substance use, is we have some tax credits available. Okay. And that could help us extend treatment to women. The way they work is if you give $1,000, for example, nice round figure, then 55% of that comes right off your tax bill to Missouri. And depending on what tax bracket you fit in for the federal, your federal tax return, you, we typically see people get 80 to 90 percent return. Okay. So, so there are tax yes. credits that are available. Yes. And keep in mind here that you're, you're helping people who You're helping need mothers, sisters, your girlfriends, your aunts. Um, they, sometimes women tend to be more invisible. Give me this. some of the warning signs. Well, that dependency, when you begin to go off it, and behaviors of uh, perhaps securing them from people who haven't prescribed them. And it's, it begins to cause problems financially. Rita, the woman who called me, was spending tremendous amounts of money securing But she these realized drugs. it and she called for help. Right, yeah, yeah. But for us to be able to extend that treatment. And so, the, so if anybody's interested, if, there's, if you have any listeners or viewers who are interested in the tax credits <laughs> or treatment, they're, they're welcome to call me, Heather. Uh, Heather Harlan, uh, 573-875-8880. My extension is 2142, which is the legal drinking age and the legal drinking age times 2, 2142. And I'd be happy to help them talk about it. And uh, check us out on Facebook and on the web, too. Heather, we're just about out of time, but as we close up, is there anything in particular that you want to leave people with, a thought? Well, people, can, people in the community can help with the tax credits. That would, that would be a lot to be helping the funding. And then I think one more thought, multiply it times two. People often think of, of trying to make a big leap. Now we're going to get them in treatment and, and make, push them this big step. It's actually easier if you think of what's the smallest step you could encourage your loved one to take. And for many people in the community, we found the, fall, the smallest step is let's call Heather at Phoenix Health Programs. And that, so that they can begin to get information yeah, and talk about what right. we could do to help. That's let's, free and say, it's a consultation. Let's just, let's just let's, make a phone call. Let's make the call and see where it goes and from And you there. can go ahead and make that call and put it on speakerphone. If they're say, no, 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 go ahead and say, I just have some questions. Put it on speakerphone so everybody can hear. Take the small step because small steps can bring incredible change to our lives. Okay. Heather Harlan, thank you so much for coming by. You're welcome. Pleasure having you it's here. Good information to pass so along. Phoenix Health Program. Tomorrow, uh, Professor, retired Professor Mel Zelenek is with us. Money saving tips on traveling. Our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Pat Akers from KBIA. Our floor director is Brendan McDermott, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Miles. And if there's something you'd like to hear or see, I would love to hear from you. Drop me an email, pepperp at missouri.edu.